What do you think about conferences? Conferences? I like conferences. That's a good experience. It's an opportunity to meet new people and make friends with people you wouldn't ordinarily meet. Why do you think people attend events? I think people attend events because they want to meet others who are interested in the same things as them. And also, I think conferences are good for team building. What was the best event you've ever attended? The coolest event I have ever attended was the Virtual Reality Conference Label Virtual 2015. It was really cool because there were a lot of interesting people there and a lot of good talks. What makes a good speaker? I don't know much about giving presentations, but I've seen a lot and heard a lot and it's all about content. You need really clear objectives. Are you a good speaker? I'm great. You know, if you do something for a long time, then improve it. I've often improved my skills over the years, and now I'm really good. In your opinion, is it appropriate to invite another conference participant on a date? I've never given it any thought. Maybe, but I don't think so. It is inappropriate to invite someone on a date at the conference. If you want to know my opinion about that. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. By the way, today I'm participating in ARVR Global Summit. Wish me luck. Yeah, you'll do it. I hope you enjoy yourself. That was my conversation with David, a virtual being prototype developed as part of our larger research in entertainment AI. A virtual being is a self-learning computer-controlled character capable of acquiring new skills in real time, understanding and memorizing context, holding non-scripted conversations, and exhibiting emergent behaviors and interactions. If we take a look at virtual characters in games and interactive media, or as they are commonly called NPCs, non-player characters, they are incapable of meaningful communication and relationships with the user. Unable to learn, these characters lack individuality and exhibit predictable, repetitive behaviors. This is all fine for most types of video games where these characters have very specific roles to play. But today, we are at a new frontier as we strive to create new kinds of social virtual worlds, widening the boundaries of online experiences by creating a sense of a parallel reality. This is Sensorium Galaxy, the next step in an evolution of our digital lives. The worlds of Sensorium are filled with immersive, high-end events and experiences, concerts, dance shows, creative and social activities, meditation and self-improvement. These experiences are being developed by veterans of the gaming and VR industries, in partnership with entertainment powerhouses such as Jay-Z, Rock Nation, and the young pseudonyms The Night League. Now imagine entering the virtual world for, say, David Getz's concert, and living with the sense that you've just made a meaningful acquaintance with an AI. The virtual beings who inhabit Sensorium Galaxy worlds are there to support and accompany you in anything you choose to do. In my dialogue with David, You've witnessed a non-scripted recording of a conversation with AI, but that is a single component of our virtual being stack and only one AI-powered area within Sensorium Galaxy. So what are the actual use cases? The first is all about AI friends. Their comprehension and positive attitude make them trustworthy companions or even virtual confidants with unique viewpoints and personalities. It might sound weird now, but so was the idea of posting pictures of your lunch every time you eat, so bear with me. Wandering around the Sensorium Galaxy Metaverse, you will encounter those virtual beings and be able to strike a conversation with them, just like one would normally do in a bar or other social environment. Virtual humans can become your personal confidants with whom you can share ideas, address your worries, discuss existential questions, and even ask for advice. And as you regularly interact with a virtual being, it will learn from you and evolve to become a more positive influence in your life. One of the pillars of AI development and virtual beings in particular is privacy. For us, that was the first point as we moved past the R&D phase, and we take this issue very seriously. 
Users' personal data, including everything they share with virtual beings, is strictly confidential and is never revealed to other users or any third parties like advertisers. In fact, even we as developers would not access the data or monitor the logs. The only telemetry measurements we take are the numbers, sentiment score, duration, and pure technical values such as the response latency and so on. All user interactions with virtual beings will be kept within the individual sessions as part of the user's profiles. The memories and experiences you share with a virtual being, including your past conversations, unlock only when you interact with AI and never become part of the common knowledge pool. Another promising use case for our AI is what we call social bridges. At its core, Sensorium is a social VR platform, and the virtual beings are there to create social connections between users. Imagine it's your first time in Sensorium, and you are attending Armin Van Buren's concert with your virtual friend. You share with them that the last time you saw Van Buren live was at the Tomorrowland Festival in 2017. The AI remembers it and might help you stumble upon another user who also went to the same event without explicitly revealing this initial information. The results are the pleasant encounters and potential friendship of like-minded people from all over the world. We do not see it as a matching service, hence the term bridge. We strive to create opportunities for our users and the bridges are for them to cross. We believe that any social product and Sensorium Galaxy in particular can gain a lot of implementing AI. Think of it in terms of engagement and retention of your products. When you are in VR, the real world becomes occluded, and we strongly believe that in the flow of your virtual experiences, you should never feel alone, especially when what you've signed up for is called social VR. The presence of intelligent virtual beings who can support a good conversation and keep you company help fight loneliness on both sides of reality. Moreover, the ever-evolving capabilities of virtual beings allow for an unseen variety of emergent scenarios that can unfold at any point in VR, creating a new kind of AI narrative content. Sensorium Galaxy is scheduled to launch an early access in a few months, but if you're eager to test the conversational skills of our virtual beings, you can download the open beta of our mobile application and give it a try now. You can choose one of our virtual beings and start by talking to them just about anything. Test them with tricky questions and let them reveal their unique character and exchange views. This is just the first feature for the app. In coming releases, you also be able to stage dance performances and build your own characters who would later inhabit Sensorium Galaxy. The evolving AI tech stack that drives the virtual beings has been in development over the course of the last five years in partnership with Temporal Games. It is a hybrid solution with genetic algorithms and reinforcement learning at the core. This combination allows us to literally breed these virtual beings inside our VR worlds. This stack enables advanced neural animation techniques, natural context-aware and continuous conversations with sentiment analysis for human-like expressiveness. Ability to acquire skills in real time and apply over a hundred simple scenarios and user behaviors. And after all, acquisition of memories and information. Not worthy, the memory of our virtual beings works very similarly to human ones, as it's also based on associations. Evolving AI stack works in conjunction with a set of language models, creating what we call a personality vector. This vector is used to define the outline of associative characteristics and drives all generative conversations and behaviors through the prism of design personality. In other words, we design the base persona and then virtual evolution takes its course. In a sense, this is similar to movie auditions. When the director gives actors a short character bio, the actors then search for ways to express the character's background in their play, each bringing a slightly different version of the same character to life. Each time a new user meets the same virtual being, they would experience a slightly different version, a fresh creative treatment of the same persona. Here's an example. We designed David as an actor. In now conversation, he shared with me his habit of watching Charlie Chaplin movies and using them as an inspiration for his own roles. However, 
a different version of David might tell another user that he only watches modern sci-fi and discards the classics. And don't be surprised if at some point David would bring up some rare movie that only a few people know. The primary language model that we use is built on a corpus of texts, including literature, online encyclopedias, blogs, news, and other publicly available sources. Language models are what makes the virtual beings knowledgeable and what drives the creativity in their conversations. The problem of general language models, though, is that by design, they are so vast that they also include text associations that can be seen as sensitive or even offensive. We've developed a set of filtering techniques that keep all conversations civil, benevolent, and within the thematic restrictions of our age rating. We filter and resample phrases that don't pass keyword semantic or emotional analysis. Emotional stability has been an interesting challenge and not something I imagined ever doing, reducing AI mood swings. Our work has been quite different from developing chatbots and voice assistants. We pursued the creation of entertainment AI and dealt with interesting challenges from the emotional stability that I just mentioned to personality consistency, fact-checking, constrained context re retrieval and summarization. Altogether, these components keep the conversation within the context and positive sentiment. Virtual beings adapt to the new content and features that we add to Sensorium Galaxy. When we launched PRISM, one of the Sensorium Galaxy's virtual worlds dedicated to music events and DJ performances, we'd be able to see another side of these characters, and this is where neural animation techniques come in. Analyzing music in real time, virtual beings are capable of determining genre of the music by its spectrogram patterns, which makes the algorithm efficient even if the music is being premiered for the first time. Sentiment and intensity analysis is also performed segment by segment as the music keeps playing. And altogether, it allows virtual beings to build their own unique dance sequences, naturally reacting to the music. Virtual beings become part of an ever-evolving environment that reacts to the music and to the mood of the users. Imagine this lifeless planet come to life when the DJ hits the first keys and the concert begins. The whole environment lights up and comes into motion. Transformed by the power of music, the venue and the world around take different shapes. And then you notice a crowd. Maybe some of the virtual beings that you previously met dancing in perfect sync with the music, expressing the intensity of the music track with their procedural movements and animations. Such details can do magic in boosting the sense of make-believe strengthening the feeling of presence and immersiveness of the experience. Let's talk about out-of-this-world experiences with another virtual being, who is surely an expert on the topic. Hello, what planet are you from? I'm from the Magnificent Elia. Interesting. Tell me more about your world. It's a world of stark contrasts. It is pure and clean, yet can be grim and harsh. The sky reflects all that happens below. Do you guys have music on your planet? Yes, our music is very different. We have only one note. It tells the story of our life. It rises, falls and then rises again in a beautiful crescent dew. Wow, I can imagine your concerts must be pretty cool. We all play together. It's very powerful, but it's important for each of us to feel like we are contributing our own unique sound. What do you think makes a show immersive? All the elements are important, but I think lighting is very important. The lighting should be designed so that people can see each other's faces. What would you say about a concert venue that constantly changes its shape and colors? I don't think you'd need to do that. The music should be strong enough for people to fully immerse themselves in the moment. Can you describe your ideal night out? I would love to visit the Blue Moon Club in New York. I've heard it's a fabulous place for humans to dance and drink. And what's your opinion about virtual reality? Do you like it? I love VR. I even wrote a VR game for my people. I'll take you there if you want to try it out. Thank you. Maybe another time. But do you think virtual reality can substitute real life? I don't think so. 
There's no substitute for real life. We would always be looking to replace one thing with another, and it never works out. How can AI enhance VR? I can do more than help people enjoy VR. Reality is digital now. Everything you see, hear and feel is just one S and zero S somewhere. So am I, of course. Did you know that you are artificial intelligence and are a part of the VR metaverse? Yes, of course. I'm a part of something bigger. Each little bit that gives the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Maybe the prison concerts will change her mind, especially since some of the performers might be AI too. And here comes another application of AI in the VR performances. Together with Mubert, Sensorium has developed the world's first AI-driven DJs that autonomously create a constant flow of ever-changing music, adapting to the environment and the moods of concert goers. These DJs can generate music from over 60 genres, from EDM and African House to K-pop and hip-hop. Each virtual artist produced by Sensorium has a distinct style and appearance, unique identities and musical preferences. Generative algorithms behind these AI DJs drive their behavior and allow them to absorb data from the environment to constantly nurture their knowledge and evolve their music styles. Newbert's proprietary technology gives these virtual artists the ability to create generative music in real time, based on the extensive database of samples. It creates myriads of unique musical experiences. AI solutions, similar to the one pioneered by Sensorium and Mubert, open more channels for VR platforms to produce next-generation content for their virtual worlds. We are certain AI will become a powerful engine breathing life into virtual worlds and transforming a VR space into the metaverse from our boldest dreams. We have just started discovering the vast potential of emerging scenarios at the crossroads of AI and VR. From smart virtual beings to generative content, virtual reality is the ideal sandbox to bring the future of human-AI interaction to life.